Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and I'm going to be playing around with some deck pairings. Um, I don't usually pair decks, but I feel like I've been in a bit of a rut, and I feel like trying to come up with some pairs will just make things a little bit more exciting and kind of make my collection feel new and engaging and exciting again, because <laughs> I feel like I've gotten into that habit of just thinking like, oh, well you know, I just want to get this other deck. I want to get this deck. And I've been like looking for new decks when it's not really that I want the the decks. It's not like I'm, I'm being lured in by the decks. It's just that I think I'm just kind of bored with my, with my current tarot practice. And I think this will be a fun way to get, get some creativity and, and sort of make the collection that I have feel new again. Um, yeah, so I specifically picked out some decks that I wanted to make pairs for, um, that I don't use very often, um, that decks that I have that I just haven't really managed to integrate into, into actual use. Um, and so hopefully coming up with pairs for them will, uh, help with that, <laughs> will, will support, support them and just like, uh, bring out their good qualities or whatever. <laughs> so to start out, I've got La Corte de Taroki, which is this really cool medieval inspired, whoops, medieval inspired deck. It's sort of bookmark shaped and it's really thick because it's on this art paper. And I feel like I just have a hard time using it or I just don't think to actually use it. Um, I mean, I, it's, it's really cool, but I wonder if it's just kind of, if it feels kind of boring to use for like a, it certainly is, is something that it's like not really suited to a one card draw. Cause it's like, you know, you pull this and it's just like, oh, okay. Um, I did have this thought though, while I was messing with it, that this deck be like sort of due to its unique shape. Wouldn't this make a really interesting week ahead deck where you have you pull one card for each day of the week coming ahead um cuz they're so narrow that you can just put them straight out like this and you can read them almost like like a tapestry or like a fresco like wouldn't this be cool to have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday like week ahead um I feel like it makes it so much more interesting. <laughs> but anyway, let's bring out some of the pairs that I have for this. And definitely comment which of the pairs ends up being your favorite, because I'm very curious. To start, I've got the Tarot Cats by Anna Juan. And I think that these work really well together because the colors let me let me get in get a little closer together there we go <laughs> the, first of all the colors play really well off of each other i mean there's no, nothing like takes too much attention um and the cats give just a little bit more interest i think what i'm looking for pairs what makes a pairing feel really good is when neither deck feels distracting, where I have the two next to each other and I'm not just like only staring at the cat deck or only staring at one of the decks, but that they kind of like makes me look back and forth and want to want to look at both decks. Um, it's kind of funny, like they use a similar color scheme, but just the cats have it slightly more saturated. Um, but really it's like they use kind of the same red. They use the same very basic, um, primary color schemes. So I think they look really nice together. Ooh, this one looks really cool. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a pretty good match here. The Tarot Cats. And then this one, I feel like it's kind of obvious in a way. The Trianfi della Luna. This is the illustrated 
Pips edition. Um, I mean, they both have that very, you know, medieval slash early Renaissance Italian aesthetic. They have kind of the same colors. Um, another reason that I actually am kind of excited to potentially use this pairing is because I had the... I really like these two together. I had the... Um, Pip version of the Trion, Trion Fidel Luna, and when I saw that the illustrated version was coming out, I was like, oh, well, I I love illustrated miners so much more than Pip decks, so I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get rid of the, I'm gonna get rid of the Pip version that I have and get the illustrated version. And I love all the illustrations, but I feel like I don't use this deck very often, and it might be because doing multiple cards just feels like kind of a lot because there's just so many characters now that are involved like um let's let's pull out some of the some of the miners like even when you even when you get minor cards it just feels like there's so much happening there's so many figures and they all look so strange that it's like you almost don't get to fully appreciate the um, any individual one because there's just so much more happening compared to the Pips version where you had the Pips to kind of balance it out. And I kind of regret getting rid of the Pips edition. But at the same time, I think that this pairing will be really good because I'll kind of bring the Pips back into the mix here. <laughs> And balance it out a little bit more. I mean, I feel, doesn't the doesn't it just feel more balanced having the pips, having the pips here? I just think it. I just think it makes sense, and it it feels it feels nicer. This is a cool couple here. <laughs> I kind of like these two together. I like how the the robe here is like the same color as the dragon. It almost feels like a human version of this very, you know, of this dragon. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, so I think that obviously these two go quite well together. I mean, admittedly, like, I think a huge aspect of whether cards go together is just the color scheme. It's not the only aspect, but it is a big one. And then the next one that I was actually pretty surprised at was the Tarot of the Drowning World. And I think these are so good. I think this is my personal favorite pairing. Um, and specifically, I think it looks so good when it's positioned. Let me Let me arrange this on camera here. It looks so good when it's positioned like this because it reminds me of like a triptych. The, um, you know, when you have the, t the closed art here and you open it up and you have, you have a triptych and it, I just think it, the flanking is so good and it almost makes these really narrow size make sense. And then this very oversized card up here, it's like the same height until the arch starts. Like if you put this, if you line this up on the bottom, it's the same height. And then the top is just like this little arch. And so you get like this little peak here and you can, oh, it's so cool. Um, yeah, I think also the fact that the um, Drowning World is more, it's photographic and it's more um, saturated and higher contrast means that it just works really well as being sort of a centerpiece. Oh, that one's so cool. Oh, shit. <laughs> Isn't this like an intense pairing? You have two deaths on the tower like this, but just they're so cool next to each other. And it works whether it's a minor or a major here, like, or two minors or one of each. And it's just so engaging and like pretty, you know, it's just pretty. I just, I'm, 
I am enamored with this pairing. <laughs> oh, isn't this cool when you have a miner in the middle and then you have two figures on the side? Oh, weird. I think what also works about this is that there aren't really a lot of pure whites. Like the border here is this sort of gray and this is an off-white um, because of the paper. So it's not, you know, distracting. Okay, I have a lot of pairings to get through, so I'll stop soon. But, oh man, I just think this, oh, look at this. This is so cool. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I guess I've sort of revealed that my favorite pairing with the Corte de Taroki is the Tarot of the Drowning World. And that's kind of a bonus for me because I don't use the Tarot of the Drowning World that much either. So this is like, oh, well now I have a good excuse opportunity to use two decks that I don't use very often. Oh, it's so pretty. Anyway, the next deck that I am finding pairings for is one that was not difficult to find pairings for, and I'm just kind of surprised that I don't use this deck more often, the Outgrow Yourself Oracle and Tarot. And what's funny is that I got this deck because I saw it on uh, BB's channel, Pure Red Velvet, in her pairing video, and she paired it with the Alchemical Visions Tarot, and I was looking for ways to use the Alchemical Visions, and the pairing is so worked so well. Um, and then I got it. I had the Alchemical Visions and then just never used either one of them. <laughs> so hopefully this pairing idea will actually work as a way of of using these. But yeah, it's very pretty. And so naturally it goes well with a lot of things. I guess I just wanted to be reminded of its versatility or or something. So I kind of, for starters, ended up pairing this with a lot of my favorite decks. One of them is the Autonomic Tarot. Um, this is a 30 card deck, so it has um, it has two cards each for the minors and then all the majors. And they definitely go well together from a color perspective. And I think that the arts, like, I just really, I really like the, um, shapes that they all use because the, the, um, Outgrow Yourself has so much negative space in it and the autonomic is so based on, on shapes and the sort of like squiggly geometric, but not entirely geometric, like, I don't even know what I'm trying to describe here. But yeah, I think they look really good together. And I think this is a good way to use the autonomic too, because autonomic is a little bit hard to use, admittedly, um, just because it's a smaller deck. So having something to play off of. Ooh, I love these chilies next to these um, trees on the hanged man here. Trust and rest, prudence. <laughs> it's next to. Oh, that's so cool. I think those. That makes a nice little message. Yeah. And I think the art styles are different enough, but th that they don't. It's not distracting. Like sometimes if two decks are too similar but not quite the same, it's just distracting. But. These are different enough that they can both kind of hold their own. Yeah, I think these I think these go well together. So that's the autonomic tarot. And next up is another perennial favorite of mine, <laughs> the new wave tarot. And I've, I picked this one just because I thought that the, I, I, I thought it would be fun to be able to incorporate the element of, of music. Cause like each of these 
uh, cards has a New Wave artist on it, and so a lot of times when I'm using the New Wave tarot, then I will pull up a song by that artist while I am doing, like, after I pull the card, or pull multiple cards, and it's really interesting, and I feel like it helps me just kind of sink into the cards a little bit more, and I'd, I thought it'd be fun to have that element here. And then again, it turns out that the colors just totally work, and they both of them just being so heavy, such heavy black, and having the, the black borders, black backgrounds, works really well. The fact that this is a photography collage, you know, digital photography collage, I think works well with, in, in conjunction with the hand-drawn, very squiggly, messy kind of drawings on the Outgrow Yourself. And yeah, they just are so... Look at these two together. This pairing feels very dignified. I don't know if that's exactly the right... what I'm trying to say, but, you know... They both feel like powerful um, decks that have a very particular voice and that sort of know what know what they're doing, know what they're saying. <laughs> this is a cool one too. Look at these cool zigzags. It totally looks like it would fit in this new wave world. Oh, that one's cute. Oh, I love this one. I love the beach and the the beach high priestess here. Like, I feel like there's a lot of messages you could kind of get about the beach as being a transition place between land and sea, and then the high priestess as being a transition uh, of the veil. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, so <laughs> New Wave Tarot. I'm pretty excited about this one, and I... I I'm always looking for any excuse to use the new wave tarot because <laughs> I love it so much. All right. Next up is another perennial favorite of mine, the Blind the Sun illustrated tarot. I mean, honestly, like the the Outgrow Yourself is so easy to pair because I feel like the the at least for the decks that I have, because I tend towards these black and white <laughs> decks a lot, and so there's a lot of black and white in the Outgrow Yourself, so naturally they're going to go well together. Um, I think in this case what's really cool is that they they kind of both bring out the other one in the sense that, like, the fact that the Blind the Sun has so much white in it because it's pure black and white, so there's a lot more white, I think, is, like, highlighted by the fact that there's relatively little white on the Outgrow Yourself, and then the fact that the Outgrow Yourself has color and the Blind the Sun has no color at all means that the color pops, and so, like, they both make the other one pop out, <laughs> which is really cool. And I feel like the art styles have similar vibes, even though they're um, they're very different artistically, you know, I mean, I guess they're not that different. They're both hand, they have some similarities and some differences. They're both hand drawn. They both have kind of the imperfect squiggly lines. Um, the Blind the Sun has thicker lines and it's done with sort of multiple pen widths. And then this one is all single pen. They both kind of have textures, but not exactly. Like, the the textures are done with lines, where this has, you know, a lot of dots on the figures, and this has a lot of hash marks for shading on the swords. Oh, I really like this, these two. The King of Cups and the Universe slash World. Maybe, it, maybe it's sort of the nighttime setting for both of them, and they both have the stars and the moon and... The, and I don't know, these just look so cool together. They both, like, all the char all the characters have kind of this blasé um, confidence, I guess, or 
<laughs> like this this tiger looks very just very blase as as do, does this um figure in the universe card being very like yep i'm here <laughs> so i like these two together i think that they will work nicely i swear i'm so tempted to just like do a full flip through of like pairings for for what am I what am I trying to say <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say but like like flip through the entire deck for some of my favorite pairings like the entirety of both decks for my favorite pairings to see how they go all right and the next one that I have is the Gorgon's Tarot this is the slightly smaller edition and again being a black and white having the same kind of um pattern let me kind of scooch scooch things here they both have patterns they both have um the black and white emphasis ooh abundance queen of pentacles and so kind of, I guess just kind of for the, for a lot of the same reasons that I think this works with the Blind the Sun, I think this works with Gorgons. In particular, I kind of, I really like the fact that these patterns are a lot cleaner and, you know, they're, they're tidy because they're done on computer and so the lines are smooth, the edges are smooth, and the patterns are perfectly repeating in combination with this very, very messy... Um, let me kind of let me do this this very messy hand-drawn patterns that we have in the outgrow yourself but there's so much going on in the gorgons that i think the the you know simplicity in that like the figure focus on in the outgrow yourself works really well i'm honestly not a hundred percent on the two shapes like having the round one and then this very you know standard size tarot i feel like maybe if i had the larger gorgon's tarot it would work better but i just feel like these shapes next to each other are just so awkward because they're not quite the same height and they're not like I don't know. I feel like I'd want to come up with some sort of symbolic reason that I could then incorporate in the reading of like the round one represents um, things that are in motion and the rectangular one represents things that are stable or something like that. Or maybe if I tried some different arrangements where I had like multiple of one deck. This looks kind of like a fucking like a like a bicycle. <laughs> That could be kind of interesting, having, like, the two, the wheels, and then the rider. That could be interesting. But, you know, I just, I feel like I want to do something to incorporate it, because otherwise I just think it's a little bit awkward. I think that, I guess you'd call it, like, um, it's like the ratio between the two is not, the size ratio does not feel harmonious to me, <laughs> compositionally. <laughs> So, I don't know. I'll I'll think about that one. And the last pairing that I have for the Outgrow Yourself actually kind of shocked me about how well it worked because I did it just randomly on impulse and then it was like, oh shit, these actually look like really good together. And that is the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. And I would never, I don't, know why I even thought of putting these together. I think it's just because I really wanted to put the mermaid tarot with something. And like, I don't know, for some reason when I was thinking of the mermaid tarot, I was thinking that it would just be, it's so golden. It's got this very golden tone over the whole thing that it wouldn't mesh, mesh with something that is very, um, very black and white. And I, I don't know, but it, doesn't it totally work? Isn't this so pretty together? Like, it looks like reading in the golden hour. Oh, man. I 
I mean, I feel like I just don't even have anything to say about it because it's it's so self explanatory. You could even do some things. Ooh, look at the <laughs> look at the blues together. You could even do something with a um doing an intentional you know the the light and shadow or some something about the fact that this is like brighter than the other one sun sun and moon daytime nighttime oh these are so cool together and the colors work so well like the like uh. This is one of those ones where I would really want to do just like, I'm tempted to do just a full flip through. Okay, okay, anyway. <laughs> the Dame Darcy Mermaid, if you want to like go away from this video with a pairing recommendation, personally, like I highly recommend pairing the Mermaid Tarot with the Outgrow Yourself. I think it is so pretty, so surprising, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. The next deck that I'm finding a pairing for is the Gentle Thrills Tarot. And I, this I also got because I saw it on BB's channel <laughs> and it's really cool. Um, but like, I haven't used it because I don't really like the way that some of the cards play together when it, when you have multiple cards. Like, for a single card reading, this deck is so cool. And I'll just flip through a couple, a couple things where, like, like, this Empress card is so cool. I love the pattern on the outside. I want to get to some of the majors and things. Like, oh, it, look at these, look at these patterns. Look how Look how bright it is. Look how cool it is. Like, very me. Oh, the hanged man is a traitor. Like, he, like this is so me. It's so cool. And yet, sometimes I just feel like the cards don't really go well with each other. Especially with the wands and the cups suits. I don't know what it is, but like... I don't know. These just don't look like they go together. They have similar shapes. They have the same colors, but something about the way the colors are used or just the overall feeling of this one being so floral or whatever. And the cups are kind of like that too. The The borders, I, I do not care for the borders on the cups cards. Like it's, I don't know. They're not, they're not punk enough. These don't look like they're from the same deck. This looks like it's from a cool punk deck. And this looks like it's from a three-year-old's deck. <laughs> Not to be dismissive of not not to be dismissive of three year olds, but you know I just don't like the way that they go together. And so when I have a whole spread of cards out, it just feels like I don't know. This doesn't make sense. I don't like them all together. And so I I'm hoping that these pairings will help with that in the sense of giving something to latch onto, something to sort of either blend these together or or just have a way to give a more thorough reading with just a couple, with one of these cards. So for starters, I tried out the Inversion Tarot, which is just this cute little black and white pip deck. And I think it kind of helps. Um, it definitely is one of those things. Let me actually arrange it. I think it definitely makes sense in terms of having more cards around it. And that way there's really nothing that this has to compete against. This really takes center stage. You have a few supporting cards that you can use to get more meaning out of it and just have more things to latch onto. But really, like, it's more all meant to draw your focus towards the center here. So it's like you have your star player and then your supporting cast. Um... And that way, you know, I don't have to worry about multiple of the Gentle Thrills working together. 
So this does look really cool. And I think this would be kind of interesting to use like a, as a, almost more like an Oracle deck with like a central theme, central message that sort of influences the rest of the cards. Um, yeah, so I think this looks pretty, this looks pretty good. I feel like it's kind of, um, basic in a way, which is fine. I also like the size of the Inversion Tarot being slightly undersized with the Gentle Thrills Tarot, which is slightly oversized uh, for a tarot deck. Um, and then the next one is the Guided Hand Tarot, um, which does not seem like it should go together, and I guess I don't know if it really does. Like, I think when I first saw these two together, I was like, oh wow, these go together surprisingly well. But but now I'm not, I don't know if I'm sold on it. <laughs> I mean, some of them go together really well. Like these, I think, I think suit each other. And I think in some ways having the, the more calm, here, let me try to, let me bring some more cards in. Having the, the calmer colors works, I think. I think it, it balances, like if you had these two on the other side, it, you know, it balances the colors and the gentle thrills really well. Um, I mean, I think, I think it's one of those things like when the colors work well with each other, then it totally works. But sometimes I'm not totally convinced that the colors work well together. Like these, these two, if you just had these, it's like, mm, I don't know. I'm not entirely, I'm not sold on it. But I kind of, I like both the decks and I would be curious to see what they have to say together. This is really funny seeing these two together. <laughs> the high priestess like looking at the lovers here. Um, so that's an option, the guided hand. Another option that I think works maybe a little better is the Brit's Third Eye Tarot. And I think it works just because the colors on the Brit's Third Eye are a little more saturated, but the, uh, you know, than the Guided Hand, but overall the cards are a little bit simpler. Um, there aren't so many patterns. It's still very figure oriented. These look kind of interesting together. Um, I feel like the, the, um, third eye tarot definitely works as sort of a unifying link between cards that otherwise don't really go together. Like if you had these sort of next to each other and then you had the Brit's third eye in between, I think that kind of helps. Um... Yeah, again, it's sort of a, we'll see, situation. These two are great together. Those are so cute. Look at that. But that's the thing. It's like, if they're not, I mean, these two kind of, kind of work. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to play with it. This is my trouble with the Gentle Thrills. The Gentle Thrills is hard to find a pair for, honestly. But I did find a pair that I think does work shockingly well. <laughs> um, and I'm very happy for this pairing. And it is with the New Choice Tarot de Marseille. And here is what that looks like. And I think these totally work together. I think the colors play well and I I like the pale yellow parchment color background on the new choice because I think it's neutral enough that it plays well with the um, gentle thrills, but it's still colorful and saturated enough that 
it doesn't get overshadowed. Um, the pips are really nice and they're intricate enough that they still command attention. Um, and then I want to get like a figure and the figures I think work pretty well together. Like they, I don't know. They're completely different art styles, like vastly, vastly different. Um, but maybe having the more traditional art style aspects of the, um, of the New Choice Marseille works well with this very modern, wacky, hyper-patterned, um, gentle thrills. Yeah, like, look at all these together, too. They also both have that little bit of, um, you know, queer punk strangeness about them. These work well here. And yeah, like, the, the, the big key, I think, for the gentle thrills is if the cards work well with both the cups and the the knot cups and i think these all yeah work well together the the knight of cups here works just as well with the queen of swords as it does with the cups here and so it acts as like a connecting thread so i i like this one i actually ended up using this for a reading last night um using this pairing and I think it worked pretty well, so I'm I'm satisfied with this one, and I'm happy because I I was not a hundred percent convinced that I'd be able to find a pairing for the Gentle Thrills uh, tarot. It's just because it's just such a it's a weird one. Next up, I've got some pairings for the Tarot of the Animal Lords. This is just the Spanish box, but it's Los Garabeo and it's English titles, Tarot de los Señores Animales, and I really like this deck. It's out of print, and I paid an out of print price for it because I really liked it, and I have not fucking touched it, and I don't know why. <laughs> um, it's like a little hard to use, I guess. It it's it's very strange, and the art style is very strange, and it's you know animal heads on human bodies, which I love that. The judgment card here is actually the reason that I ended up getting this deck, because I think this is such a good judgment card. Um, and I, the very, very few times that I've used this deck, I actually have quite liked it, but I'm just not, I don't tend to reach for it. Um, maybe it's kind of the messiness on some of the cards, like, you know, it looks like there's been paint spilled on it, which is very intentional to the to the art. I really love this little badger. Anyway, so yeah, I'm trying to find some pairings for it. And the thing that makes this hard I is that I have a lot of the the decks that I have that I think would match the color scheme well are mostly animal decks and I was I'm a little hesitant to use an animal deck with this one because I feel like it's almost too many animals together where I'm I want these animals to be the focus and the central meaning where when I'm starting to contemplate animal symbolism I want it to be like okay I'm gonna think about badgers and so when you when I bring in other animals it just feels a little bit like okay so now it's just like a big old menagerie of animals and it almost doesn't give these guys the proper attention that they deserve and that they need and that I act, that I enjoy when I work with this deck very occasionally. Um, there was one animal deck that I think does work pretty well, and that is the Badger's Forest Tarot. I have sort of the standard tarot size for it. It comes in different sizes. These work well together... And I think half the reason is just because they are both done with this watercolor, which is very pretty together. Um, and the Badger's Forest is, like, simple enough. It doesn't have a lot of words on it. It doesn't have... You, the suits are determined by what animal is in it. Um, badgers are swords. 
And so it just has the number up here or like a very subtle text. And so it feels very atmospheric, I guess. And it's just kind of lending more atmosphere and almost more like world building to the uh, animal lords here. Um, and I feel like putting these together tells a bit of a story. And I could almost see the animals in the badger's forest as like going to the animal lords for advice, I guess. Like you can see this little fox kit seeking out the wisdom of this goat at the top. Yeah, and I think also just because the these are, you know, you see a lot of the watercolor texture, but the cards are relatively clean. So with this very busy card with all the paint splatters and with the detailed art and with all the text and with the big borders and the little symbols up in the top for the suit and all this stuff, it's like the it doesn't compete, you know. It's not too much happening. So yeah, I actually I I think these work. I'm pretty happy with these. And I think it kind of brings that storybook feeling. Um Yeah, which is good. So I like this pairing. I like it. It's good. Solid. Yes with the Badger's Forest. And then directly flying in the face of what I just said about having too much on the cards, <laughs> I have also paired it with the Noisy Museum Tarot, which is really interesting. Um, you'd think that like there's there's so much going on in the Noisy Museum but I don't know. The fact that the Noisy Museum is so saturated, the fact that the art styles are very different, obviously, this being like a collage deck, um, that works well. They are, they both have texture. This one being the texture of the paint splatters and this one just being, um, many different types of textures, depending on either the textures of like paint strokes from the art piece or you know, the grunge textures laid on top. I think that these are kind of cute together. <laughs> um, this is like the weirdest card in this deck is this panda. I think it looks really bad. I think they needed to to chunk up the, the human body a little bit. Um, yeah. I guess I don't have that much to say on it, but they kind of, they kind of work. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not imagining things like these, these sort of look like they could kind of go together. I kind of like these two together too. You have a lot of red here, but you have just like an eatsy bit of red in the salamander there. Ooh, these two are great together. Something about them facing away from each other. I also like the directionality of both of these. Um, or these two looking towards each other. Oh man, this guy, this figure looks like he's just been scratched in the beak by this cockatiel here. Like this, this cockatiel, this guy was like trying to come in and, and fight him or something. And this cockatiel was like, Rah! and just like scratched at this guy's eye. Uh... Yeah, so I guess the fact that you can sort of see a story in between these, oh, and like the snakes and the Ace of Pentacles, the sort of like sneaky dealings, sneaky opportunities, or like taking, taking opportunities, and like the crossed fingers here, you get so much like deception from these two. Yeah, so I guess like symbolically, they just work so well together. Oh, these are cute together too. Yeah, so it's kind of like a shocking pairing, but to me, it's surprising, but I think they totally work together. Um, the Noisy Museum Tarot. And then my last pairing, <laughs> the last pairing is a Rider-Waite-Smith deck. Um, this is the 1909 
uh, restoration, and I got it from game make game drive drive through playing cards drive through playing cards um, because I think that the colors on this work very well together. Um, I guess just the fact that this one has so much, this one kind of goes its own way a lot, and you can definitely see the meaning. But it's not a Rider Waite Smith clone by any means. It definitely has very different um, <laughs> scenes depicted. I feel like it's almost balanced by the very traditional, clear, easy to interpret nature of this Rider Waite Smith here. Um, that you can like focus all of your your energy and all of your time to like deciphering or figuring out the stories and the scene behind the cards that you have from the Animal Lords, and then this becomes, like, a nice supplementary, comfortable place to be. Um, love these two together. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, and admittedly, like, I just think that the art styles and the colors work super well together. I did try it with just the plaid back and it looked bad because the plaid plaid back Rider Waite Smith just had was way too saturated, I think. Um uh, it ended up competing with this, but this like muted color tone. I, if you have the um Centennial Rider Waite Smith, I think the Centennial has a similar color palette to the 1909 restoration, so that would probably be good or any anything that's a little bit more muted. Oh, I love these two together. Sorry, I totally just spaced out for a second looking at these. But yeah, like I don't know. Something about incorporating the tradition and I don't I don't <laughs> I don't think of the Rider Waite Smith very often to be perfectly honest. So this is kind of interesting to to bring it back into the fold. And I think it works. And the last deck that I'm pairing up today is the Anima Mundi Tarot, which is something that I was on the fence about for a really long time, and I ended up getting it just so that I wouldn't have to think about it anymore, and I have literally not even touched it since then. <laughs> like, I have not done a single reading with this with this deck. And I think it's maybe just because it's so simple that I feel like I need to be really focused. <laughs> and I am very, for whatever reason lately, I have not been focused on, um, on, on tarot readings and magic-y things. <laughs> so I think, I think having something to, having more things alongside it to set the mood, to help, to help set the mood as I'm reading, I think will be really helpful for that, and that's why I think pairings are going to work nicely. Um, one pairing that I have is with the 100 Ink Animals Oracle Card deck, which is this super cute little baby deck of 100 Ink Animals with these little teeny tiny animal drawings on it. Look how, look how little, and there's so much white space, and so it's so pretty, and like, I think that the simplicity of both decks is really good and focused and like um you can really bear down to like single symbols to focus on but having two of them or at least two of them definitely makes it easier to focus on the symbols because sometimes if i have, have like just this one vulture parish it's like okay so now i really need to sink into vulture and if it's not quite grabbing me as much as I'd like to, it's so easy to just be like, okay, forget it, never mind. And sort of the same with this. It's like, this is a lovely moon. And the, obviously, the moon card has so much to sink into, but the fact that this is so simply done, it feels like, okay, it's the moon. Goodbye. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, look at this orca. So yeah, it's... It definitely... They're both so beautiful, you know. They're beautiful decks. And very... Feel very pretty and gentle and delicate. And I think that works kind of nicely. It also works cool to have, like, a little flank on the sides here. And obviously these being just, like, these little teeny tiny black and white animals, there's nothing to 
compete with. It's not like the colors are ever going to clash. <laughs> um, also, the white backgrounds on this, it, it, you know, flows nicely between the two. I love this little booby. The blue-footed booby. Yeah. So, these definitely work together, and I feel like they they put you in a in a mood. <laughs> they put me in a mood. I've also paired it with I've also paired it with the Hidden Forest Oracle. I really love this little oracle deck. Again, just because it's got these little simple um little simple cards singular focused single symbol to focus on and I think that the limited color with the heavy lines works well with the limited lines and full color <laughs> on on that one um they're also very animal based it's so funny how I was talking about I was having a hard time finding like I, I didn't like pairings between animal based decks for the animal lords but i actually i like these two together maybe just because these feel like more realistic animals you know not that the um uh not that the hidden forest is entirely animal based but obviously there's a lot of animals in it um but yeah i guess the fact that these these all feel like real animals makes us a better pairing as opposed to having like an animal and then anthro or maybe it's just that the art style works a little better i don't know but i like these together like i feel like i could get a lot from these two symbols together the sort of scarab or not scarab um rhinoceros beetle strength rose the lemniscuit and the broom like there's enough symbols there that are all simple enough but i can there's like enough that for me to that something is going to hit hit right and like there's enough possible connections and combinations to be made between these symbols that I think it'll be a little bit easier to um read so I like that pairing I think it's pretty pretty good it's funny that I've had two oracle deck pairings now I don't have many oracle decks which is why I never have oracle pairings why pretty much all of these have been tarot with tarot because i just don't have a lot of oracle decks but i do have another one <laughs> which i've also paired with this and that is the weird sisters oracle and this one it's it's described as like an oracle grimoire and so each of the cards is meant it's it's sort of like a spell or a magical activity for you to do um and I think that these, I like these together. It's kind of cool how one on the sides, one is silver and the other is gold. But yeah, I think that they're both just, they're calm and engaging. I really like the crane with the candle here. And again, like it just it gives a few more symbols to work with. I think the colors are nice together. I like all the white space. I feel like yeah, the the Anima Mundi works really well with a lot of white space. Oh, isn't this cool? Also, the golds that they use are very similar. It's sort of like a a t tarnished greenish kind of gold instead of a really orangey gold. Ooh. Ooh, look at these two together. <laughs> the greens together. And the tiger, like, bringing you your blessing. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like these two. Oh! <laughs> I have the snake in there. From while I was, when I was playing with the combinations. Yeah. Ooh, these are cool together. Yeah, I think that I think these make a nice little combo. 
the Weird Sisters Oracle. And now the very last one basically flies in the face of all of this stuff about white space that I was talking about. <laughs> and it is the Goblins and Gardens Tarot. Which is a lot busier <laughs> and has a lot going on in each card. But it's natural enough. Um, the figures that are drawn are not animals usually. They're just kind of creatures. Which I think is a cool combo. So now you can sort of focus on the animal here and the creature here. You have like different differences of kind, which is fun. Um, and the Anima Mundi is simple enough that it it now complements this. I feel like that's the thing is like you either you you want one deck to be I mean if, I, I guess at least in this case one deck to be simpler and then the other to be busier and so using this as the base either you go way simpler like the um, hundred ink animals or you go way busier like the goblins and gardens and that way they aren't competing with each other. The natural themes definitely work for each one too. Um, and these colors are so muted that they basically go with anything. Um, especially because these are, these are more natural colors. They're certainly saturated, but they are natural colors. I like these two together. So this one kind of interesting. This one kind of surprised me. But I like it. I like it a lot. And also I think the fact that there is the black and white in the figures and in some of the drawings here, I think that is nice. It balances the white borders here. Yeah. Ooh. I like this Ace of Swords with a lot of these. Oh, isn't that so pretty? I like those two together. Ooh, interesting. Well, now, now I'm just pairing things with the Ace of Swords. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, the Goblins and Gardens Tarot, um, I think it kind of works. And I guess we'll just see, we'll see how it goes. All right, thanks for watching. Let me know what your favorite pairings for each of these decks were and maybe which one I should start using first because now I have kind of like a lot of pairings that I have to choose from and I don't want to, I don't want to forget about them. I want to, I want to like sink my teeth into one of them. Uh, if you have any other recommendations for pairings of these or any pairings that you like for basically any of the decks that I have featured, I'd definitely love to hear them and definitely go and watch BB's VR, uh, the Perfect Pairs VR, which was done to Lisa Papadis' Perfect Pairs video. I will link both of them in the description, and I will see you later. Bye!